Bum. Bum, 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 bum. It's Friday. Bum, 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 that can only mean one thing. Bum, 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 bum. The boys are back with a brand bum. new episode of Oilers Nation Radio. Bum, 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 bum. Presented by Oodle Noodle. Bum, 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 We've got bum, Liam bum, bum. and Tyler. Bum, bum. We're Mabiko <laughs> and Rick <laughs> Dan bum, bum. and Bagmuck with an hour of all Oilers talk or whatever you get said in the old intro. Tyler, where are we at with the new intro? Uh, honestly, I just need time to make one. So <laughs> I yep. believe I believe there'll be plenty of time next Thursday around 6 p.m. ish. I think you'll have about two and a half, three hours of uh, yeah, uninterrupted time you can use. Yep. And we just grind it out on the flight. Yeah, Why not. I'm going to watch Peaky Blind Us. So don't ask me. It's a good show. Oh, no. It seems like you have free time, too. Maybe you could help out. <laughs> yeah, it's a great show. I A lot of people told me I should watch Peaky Blind. Yeah, I think Jay was on show. that a couple of like. Back when it first like, got hot. Yeah. I'm surprised he didn't start dressing like that then. Well, that's fair. You know? Yeah, yeah. I, was, uh, I could see him wearing those little caps. <laughs> Jay's like, do you remember in I the office see when Michael Scott is like, you can always tell what movie he's watching by his by his personality. Yeah. <laughs> he watches Devil's Wear Prada. And she's like, he's going to kill me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, welcome to Oilers Nation Radio episode 9,481. As we do it's episode week. 255. As we do every week, <laughs> we start off with a delicious debate for our friends at Oodle Noodle, location number 18 in Calgary opened about a month ago now. You're down Very there. Very popular. Let us know how it goes. Yep. The locals love something it. delicious. Yesterday, Zach had a Tokyo Glaze in the office. We were all clamoring for it. We all wanted it. And I wanted it. And I want you to try it too. Tyler, what do you got for a delicious debate for us today? Clem Costin got a look with Connor McDavid yesterday and the Oilers win over the New York Islanders looked pretty good in the process as well. I also liked how before the game he was talking about how nervous he was to get a chance to play up there. But the question is, can Clem Costin be a long term fit in the top six? I also love that his dad kind of said something and I'm paraphrasing. He was like, don't screw it up. <laughs> yeah. It's just such a dad thing to say. I Didn't he it. also make him get a picture with Connor? Yeah. Yeah. So the New like, Year's yeah you got to get a picture with Connor. So that's where that one from like New Year's Eve came from. He's like, yeah, yeah no. My dad told me how to do this. <laughs> I love that. He's just seems so pumped to be here. He's like, adorable. There's no filter. He just, whatever's in his head just kind of goes out there. All right. Clean in the top six, Rick. No, really I don't long term. Oh, was that the question? Long term? Yeah, can he be a long term no. solution in the top uh, six? Oh, there's nothing wrong with, we love him. I want him on the team. Sign him to two year, two, two million, eight years or something like that. I don't know, but he's definitely a bottom six guy. He could come up and help out when, you know, Kane, but when Kane comes back, you're not taking Kane doesn't go out of the top six. You're not taking any other guys out of the top six that are there right now. Well, Tyler, what was your, you ran through this on Oilers nation every day. What was your thought there? Yeah. Well, my thought was just kind of, if Kane comes back, like, let's say Kane's back in again. So you're not, month. instead of a top six, you want to run like a top nine. Now. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I, well, it's still probably, well, I don't know at that point. He's, he looked really good with, with Nuge, right? So you'd probably end up putting Kane up with Connor and then maybe putting Clean with Nuge. down with Nuge yeah, and finding an them a better, another better winger than Janmark. Yeah. He's not going to go into the top six. Like just, but like, hey, hear me out. Does this not sound good? Hyman, McDavid, Costin. So you're pairing there essentially as McDavid, Hyman. Yeah. Kane, Dreisaitl, Yamamoto. Seems pretty good. Nuge with McLeod and Pugliarvi. Do we miss anybody there? Nope. No. Fogel Fogel. goes to the third line. Fogel with, goes to the fourth line. Uh, fourth line with Holloway or either Derek Ryan or Yamak. <sighs> I think that fourth line is too expensive. I mean, yeah, one of Yanmark or Ryan has to go down. Yeah. So you run Holloway down the middle with Fogel. Costs more. I don't remember. Now. I think they're exactly the exact same. same. Oh. And oh, they're both over 1.1. So it doesn't even matter. Right. Like you just lose that 1.1. We got to answer the rest of this first, because I had something I wanted. To I'd be, I'm just saying like, I would be really intrigued if, and I think Costin showed last night that maybe he can belong there. Maybe he can be that Pat Maroon S guy. I know that's maybe lofty expectations. It's only been one game. I got to yeah, pump yeah, the brakes, yeah. but if it works, the idea of creating a legit top nine, that's just a nightmare. Bag milk's eyes are getting big. He's so I excited. Use a coffee. We'll get to that in hot and cold performers. <laughs> <laughs> but I just think the idea of having a top nine, that three lines that can all score strike fear into the opposition. Yeah. I, ultimately, long-term, you'd probably have Holloway up in that spot. 
Ideally, sure. Yeah, sure. But that's not the reality of the situation right now. Yeah, you said long term. Yeah, okay, fair. Time, long term, we're looking. I just, you know what? In in that group of nine, I like where he goes. Um, with the way Holloway's playing right now, I think I'd rather see him in and out. Like, you can swap him in and out, whoever's playing the best at the time. But the good thing is, is this just, like, helps solidify depth for this team. Yeah, like, there's no way Clem Costin's coming out of the lineup at any point. No. Well, yeah, hopefully, like, no healthy scratches. Yeah, there's no way. I can't see it. No. Unless something, something really falls off the rails here. Yeah, I also think you could probably, once Kane's back, because you have Costin now, and Costin wasn't a factor in the top 12 for forwards at the beginning of the year, you could probably send Holloway down at that point, right? I don't like that, man. I like what he's doing right now. But do you- I understand the minutes. Okay, how many minutes is he playing right now, anyways? Played just under 10 yesterday. What's his average for the year? Probably just a second. So let's call it 10. Yeah. Um, what do you think he should be playing? 14. So 14. So another five or six shifts a game. Yeah. It's like so a another, another two, two shifts, shifts a period. Shifts and a half, two shifts a period. I think the with how he's going right now, I think he'll start getting that. He's averaging 853 specifically. Well, but that was a weird start. And I well, think yeah, he's wait. playing I, now. I don't know because what we're 40 games into the season there's been a lot of injuries and he's never really had that opportunity on a consistent basis to like have that chance to elevate himself up the lineup. No, but, you're, often, but, you're, but you've been impressed with this game in the last five to 10 averaging nine forty one yeah. since the start of December. So I better. mean, I'm kind of torn on it because yeah, I agree. Like he's playing well. Yep. Better for sure. But like, what could he be doing in Bakersfield? And then what could he do if he comes back on in late March? But he's also learning how to play at the NHL speed against NHL competition. So I understand how there's, I completely understand the whole, put him in the AHL and let him get his 20, 25 minutes, whatever the hell it is, play in every, uh, every uh, situation, whatnot. But he's up here. He's practicing with two of the best players in the world. He's out there. He's getting opportunities. He's making himself look better, even in the, minute opportunities getting now. I think another thing with him too, he's not doing any harm. No, he's not doing anything wrong when he's playing. So I guess the argument is like, why send him down then? That's what I'm at the point. Like I get it. I just don't want to send him down now because I think he's, he's progressing right now in, in, in the mud, right? It's not real easy for him right now. Mm. They're not being gifted anything. He's progressing right now. Despite everything. I think you, I think he's here for the year. <laughs> yeah. I, I think at this point he's, he's here. I think the conversation's kind of moved away from that. And I mean, with the money kind of got to be here, right? Yeah. Ish. Mm. Well, it depends what his rookie bonuses look like for next year, I suppose. Why did, so why did Fogel not play last night? Her banged up. Gregor tweeted uh, that he had a bunch of ice packs and shit on after practice or something like that. Mm-hmm. Cause I was going to say there's like also the up. reports that he was a healthy scratch. I don't think it was a healthy scratch based on what on just on who reported that. I don't remember where I've seen it, but I've seen yeah. it a couple of times and I, and they even brought it up on the, if I was listening Stoffer to the radio, was talking about it. Yeah. Then it's Stoffer. Then they were brought, they brought it up. I, I have a like, hard time thinking they would have healthy scratched him. I, my thought well, was he, that Stoffer was, was just talking about how he may not play tonight. This was right after that's that, uh, that Seattle game, right? Yep. Right after when apparently, um, Woodcroft went off on the team. Finally players only meeting. Yeah. Players like meeting maybe well. this was okay. Like he, he was talking about accountability in players mm. in his last, uh, last avail. Me, that's where I kind of thought if this is a healthy scratch, man, maybe he's looking at, at, at Fogel and all of a sudden Fogel's the one who goes out the door. Do you think that works? Like if Fogel was a healthy scratch, do you think that like that works? I guess, like, I guess we won't see until he plays, but is it, the well, they just, need they, to do they, they said, you know what? Players? We don't need you. We'd rather run 11 and seven at that point. What's yeah. his contract? Two, seven, five. Yeah. No. I think it's actually three, isn't it? It might be a little over three. Eight under. Yeah. <laughs> He's got to be better, more consistent. You paid him to be consistently a bottom third line guy, and he yeah. just doesn't do that. One goal in his last eight games for Warren Fogel. But he did get hot for that like little bit. But he got like hurt. A week. He got and then he got hot. hot. Yeah. Hot, then hurt. So the quote from Gregory, oh, this doesn't really help us in pertaining to uh, Fogel, but a player told me, Jay Woodcroft, who is usually very calm, tore a strip off the team in the second intermission against the Kraken. He added it was well-deserved. The players then held a players only meeting yesterday, which would have been Wednesday um, to voice their concerns. Edmonton gifted the crack in that game and just goes on to how bad they were. And they specifically in the second period. 
Was anybody else worried after it was 2 nothing after the first period? I wasn't comfortable until the buzzer went last night. It's just what they've done to us. They did. The Oilers have blown the last three games outside of last night. The last three games they've had a two-goal lead in the third period. They fucked it up. St. Louis. There Seattle. Was, Seattle. Seattle. Vancouver. Uh, yep. Yeah. But they look oh. they look better in their own yeah. end, man. They looked really they look solid last like night. You look at you look at I'm not a big stats guy, but you look afterwards, the high danger scoring chances, 15 nothing Edmonton. They had a B in their bonnet to start off the game as well. Like that was the best first period I think I can remember. And also like Dry settle scores, fired up, big he fist was, bump. Yeah. He was into it. Yamamoto scores, shoves the guy after. Holloway scores, fired up. Zach Hyman scores on one knee, celebrating along the glass. It felt like maybe in that players only meeting, they got a little bit of like a, we need a, guys, we got to play like our lives are on the line here. Do we want to be in the playoffs this year? And Kane even talked about that when he was sitting in Rick's spot uh, the other day. He was like, hey, you know, we want as a group, we're focused on having the honor of getting to play playoff games again. See, and I, I've there, we've had a couple games this year where we've had a really good game. And I'm like, you know what? That was the team I want to see. I'm feeling good about this next game. They're going to come on. They're going to do the exact same thing. The only thing, so I'm I'm very happy with how, the way the game went last night. The only thing I'm really confident about was the goaltending. Like, I think mm-hmm. Campbell's starting to like, I don't want to get ahead of myself, but he's starting to look a lot better. And this team, I would be the first one to say, hey, listen, now they're back. But I've done that a couple times this year and I can't keep doing that. So they have to do it three to four times in a row before I'll get up back on that train. When we'll do you get- think the goaltending started to get better from Campbell specifically? When? I think it's probably been four games now where he's been like better. Like probably that first Nashville game. Like he's not, I'm not saying he's perfect. Yeah. No, I know. Games, I think I was just going to say he's got much better. Yeah. I think overall you're right. I think he had a stinker in there in one of those where I kind of was like, Oh, we're going back again, but yeah, I'll pull, I'll pull maybe I'm, maybe I'm wrong. So his last five games, December 13th against Nashville, nine Oh six, eight percentage in the win over Nashville. Then he had an eight eighty six, allowed four goals and a loss to the Preds. And then it was an eight eighty two, fifteen 15 of 17 against Winnipeg, but he wasn't bad against Winnipeg. Oh, yeah. um, Seattle stopped three of three in a relief appearance. And then baby. Everyone was saying how good he looked against Seattle. I was like, man, <laughs> I don't think he took a shot. 24 <laughs> minutes, three or 23 minutes, three <laughs> shots against. Yeah. So that, what I saw last night was a, de- a different version of him. I think, especially because like the Barzell one was a snipe. He still looked small There's in nothing, the net. And his like, glove was, I don't know where his glove was, but it yeah. definitely wasn't up. Got tipped. No, no, the, got tipped by the defender. And went no, it was a snipe, but I'll tell you this right now. If that was, if that was Miko and net, oh, everyone oh, would have oh. like lit him on fire for keeping his glove so low. To be fair, he's six foot 10. There's nothing that should go over that man's shoulders. <laughs> Jack, well, Cam- like- everyone's always like, oh, Stuart Skinner is so much bigger than Campbell. Campbell is listed as heavier on the website and only an inch shorter. Well, like, if- w- when do we give a sniper that has scored five straight games any credit whatsoever? No, yeah, you're right. Barzell ripped it. We have to. And that was one of them. The second goal was not Campbell's fault. That was that just was, a weird fucking that was bounce. Some strong ass wrist yeah. from Cal Clutterbuck. Yeah. I don't even understand the lucky physics there. of how that went in the net. It's, I mean, like I, the clutter buckle. Yeah. It was looking like it was well, going four just, feet wide. They just fired it towards the net. He threw his stick down and it just happened to be the right spot at the right time. And it went in kind of like that Chechia goal. The second Chechia goal last night mm. just kind of like found its way in the net. Yeah. Back to the delicious, delicious debate. Dan, where you playing clean cost <laughs> <laughs> I, I am with Rick in the sense that I don't necessarily look at him as a long-term option. I think it's really nice that we have this availability to us and it's, it's, you know, going forward, injuries are going to happen to this team and we need that depth. And so I like having a clean cost and bringing the edge to the bottom six that he has been. And yet still is a guy that we could put up in the top six. If we I need. look at him as almost like an Evander Kane light. We're not going to get the offense from them. They play a somewhat similar style in terms of like, they're not scared. Nobody's going to, nobody's going to get in their grill. Um, willing to jump in for Connor. Like that's a nice option. Like Dan said to have to move up. I just, I can't see him being in the top six. Really. He reminds me of top nine for sure. Of Cassian more than Evander Kane. Just when Cassian got the, here, like yes, yeah, spe- yeah, you got to specify that. which version of Cassian yeah, you're yeah, referring he to here. Got here. 2017 that, like, playoffs. Yeah. And he just quickly became like a Chops. massive fan favorite. Yep. Like didn't say as much as what Carson does, but yeah, it has that scale yeah. of being a first round pick, which they both are. Well, that's the interesting thing too about Carson. He just never really seemed to get a chance in St. Louis. For any length of time, anyway. Everyone, be honest. Who heard of Clem Costin 
when that trade was made. I remembered him, him from the World Juniors. Yeah, yeah. okay. I was going to say, no, look, that doesn't count. You can't look him up after the trade. When you saw the trade, no. Sam Rukov for him. That's why me and I was, I didn't know who he was. I don't know so who the hell he was. I knew, I knew the name just because I remember yeah. him plugging his ears at the World Juniors. I knew his name because he's a first round pick, but I knew his name as a guy who wasn't working out. Right. So, yeah. But then as you dig know. into it, you just like, you know, you see, it didn't really seem to get the opportunity to do anything really in St. Louis. So like, that happens sometimes. I guess when you look at that group of St. Louis forwards to Jordan Cairo, Robert yeah. Thomas, they just brought in Bush and It's like, those guys are all fairly young players. Yeah. It's not that much of a surprise. You didn't get in. Yeah. Sport. Sometimes you just, you need a odd man out. You need a chance. Oh, kind of like the guy you got traded. I was going to say, it's pretty much like Sam yeah. Rukov. In a <laughs> it's way. exactly like Sam Rukov because he wasn't going to leap anybody on that left side. Yeah. yeah. He is not leaping anybody right now over there either. No. Um, I just want to quickly on Jack Campbell. If this is the point where his season turns around, it's interesting that a year ago today is the point <laughs> or a year ago, I guess in two days is the point his season f- just went totally off the rails last year because he was great in the first half. Yeah. Talking about Vesna, yep. Jack Campbell backstopping the Leafs to, you know, all their best record in January or blah, blah, January 8th gave up five goals. Then it was three, five, five, three three in a game where he only faced nine shots, got yanked one, then five again. And then a couple weeks later, it was another run five, four, five, five, four, three, two, four, three, three. He was brutal from this point on last year. Um, so maybe this is like the reverse of that is what I'm saying. I was, I was, gonna, I was wondering where you're going here. <laughs> it's the reverse. Negative, he was, negative, he negative. was great. Negative, negative. He was <laughs> great in the first two half. goaler in there. I think a two goal you got to take off the list. Oh, I know. No, but I was, he was oh, giving he the whole picture. I was just going in, in order general, of like, said one there too. He gave, yeah. he gave full <laughs> I thought, credit. I thought I thought you were coming out that. just yeah. the bad ones. No, there were some decent, there was like a couple of rare good ones, but like last year, great in the first half, brutal in the second half. This year, brutal in the first half, great in the second half. How was he in the playoffs? He was fine for the Leafs in the playoffs. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I always think of, well, they didn't make it past the first round. But, a 920. Uh, like, is that Campbell's he, fault yeah, or is that the franchise? Fault. I don't know what it was. <laughs> yeah. It was. yeah. Oh, yeah. There's something there. Game one, 24 safe shutout. Game two, five goals on 34 shots lost. Game three, 941 save percentage and a win. Game four, only faced 16 shots, gave out five goals. Yikes. Game five, 914 save percentage and a win. Game six, 886 save percentage, four goals against and a loss. Game seven, 920 save percentage, but a loss. Sounds similar to what we got from Mike Smith, except that we got wins where... That's actually fair. Yeah, where the Toronto Maple Leafs didn't. There was also a lot of guys in the Leafs that did not do shit yep. in the playoffs in front of them as well. As they tend to do, yes. So <laughs> we've seen this before. Mm-hmm. I hope so. I mean, I hope he's turning around because he, he just... I mean, he just seems like such a sweetheart and a guy like you want to cheer for. Yep. That's why I like that he had a game like that last night at home, right? Yep. Got a chance to have the home crowd behind him a little bit, build him up. You heard the soup chance come out last night. I hear them a lot, actually. Like, but the very rare occasion is that you played at home. It's because we make the same sound effect for both of our goals. <laughs> but he definitely came out against Winnipeg, too, I thought. I heard it a couple of times. Yeah. So it's good to see, like, people. He was solid. He was solid. But that team played really well in front of him. But that's part that's of fine. it too. That's right? got to happen. Of course, yeah. like if you give up now. zero high danger chances, I hope your goaltender is going to look really. Uh, besides, <laughs> zero high danger chances and that Barzell goal, like, yeah, I don't buy. It counts this stuff. Well, that's why some of these stats don't make sense to me. Like, yeah. how is that not a high danger chance? He's right, the in terrifying, circle and right there. It. They didn't uh, give it up to him. He made it. And again, my problem <laughs> on that goal, know. and I tweeted it and I wrote about it in the wrap up, was my problem on that goal was the duffed breakout attempt again. Kulak. It was brutal. Yeah. Wasn't the second one a bit of a shitty breakout too? Where yep. Hyman, Hyman didn't just wait for the puck. Yep. I didn't play hard. So Mr. Kerlock kind of put out a tweet earlier today who was uh, referencing something I've been talking about for a couple of weeks now. He's like, okay, watch this. Here's a defensive zone face off. Oilers win it. Now it's time to break out. They win the puck backwards. Forwards went forwards. Is that a By the time sideways. Barry gets the puck behind the net, behind the goal line, he turns around. The forwards are gone. They're all outside the blue line already. What is he supposed to do? These yeah. are the little things. So I, I, I honestly think the season so far, we have not been outskilled. We've not gone up against teams where like, they're just better than us. We're shooting ourselves in the fucking no, foot. I, and it's up to them to fix this. And I think they can. I agree. Well, even I asked Evander Kane yesterday, I'm like, we're getting the back half of the season. What, what do the boys need to do? And he's like, we need to play like we can. We're not. And then he also said, we need some guys rolling all at the same time rather than just kind of yeah, spot here, there, spot yeah. here and there. And I think 
for me, hearing the word players only meeting, which is exciting because for me, that's the, that's the bag skate of 2000 of the early 2000s. When Mm -hmm. you heard your team get bag skated, the Oilers got bag skated in 2006. And then after that, they seem to turn it around. Uh, I think that's the new kind of term there. Uh, But yeah, I, I would say that the team had a bit of swagger last night too. You look at Yamamoto and that long stretch pass to dry sidle. That was a A team that's struggling, doesn't try that and doesn't have that kind of success. Man, if that had gone in, we'd be seeing that one for a long time. Yeah, but But those are the, those those are the kinds of plays that a team with that drip is doing drip and drop. There you and go. Just real quick on Yamamoto. His goal last night was an absolute beauty. Oh my short God. Toe drag. It's one of the nicest goals he's Unreal. probably ever scored. Yeah, probably that defenseman was in the corner. Looking out sad, sad when that Noah Dobson for laying down on that one. Beauty goal. The oily way. I want yeah, to hear from you. <laughs> Owen radio podcast and Twitter and Instagram hit us up. Where does our board clean play? Uh, he's definitely a top nine guy for me, but I'm guessing probably on the third line. That's good. It is so good. I'm not complaining can, about you it. You know he can play on the first. Now all of a sudden we're getting m- matchups on the on the bottom six that we are winning just by what's based on, on everything. There? I don't know what's going on. He's turning his computer around though. What are you doing over there? Don't worry about me. That's fine. He's he's fiddling with things. I'm nervous about the cables here because we could lose the podcast. Oh well, no, well, we're good. Dun, 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 just dun, a little dun, adjustment dun, on his dun, TV dun, table. Soft. Oh, that's oh nice. he wanted to spread them out. Where was that? Where was soft that musical mitts. styling in the opening, Liam? The little Mission Impossible. Yeah, yeah. I'll bring some more themes on nice. Tuesday. <laughs> yeah, fresh <Yes>. beats. <laughs> oh, you bring themes. I'm expecting that for next Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. <laughs> I like how pretty much every podcast we've done for the last week at some point has just turned into like, hey, we're going to Vegas right away. <laughs> I got my fanny pack the other day. I am ready oh, for I the airport. Wait. This I is do. our, hey, we're going to Vegas the other day. <laughs> segment. Short weather. Yes. What did they say it was? It was like 15 so la- Well, it's up to you. So last last I looked, uh, it was going to be like 15, 16 during oh. the day. So do I wear shorts to the rink? How, how warm are we? I'm not packing the- shorts. Well, I'm rocking shorts and I'm bringing like a pair of pants. Uh, Thursday, 16. Friday, 17. Ooh. Oh, Tyler's I, no, he he just put a shorts. pair of shorts in his bag. Got a couple of pairs of shorts in there. Um, and then Saturday. Uh, yeah, I still got 15s and 16s here. So Yeah. So you can basically bring your swim trunks. The pools won't be open, but you could basically bring them. Pools won't be open. They will not. I, I are we sure? Because I know yes. people are there like what? three, four weeks ago. And they were at that one where you get to watch all the all the all the TVs. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, sports or yeah, I know what you're talking about. You know what I'm talking yeah, about. Not yeah, something Can't world. Well, Resorts have, world. You know what? Resort <laughs> world. I'll have to use that internet thing here to figure this out. Yes. we got to watch wide. some of the games from there. <laughs> Thankfully, our friends at AMA Travel they kind of they kind of make a lot of this easy for us when we do these trips. Yeah. So, make it so all difficult. we have to worry about is whether or not we're packing shorts. Yeah, I, I don't yes. think I'm going shorts. I think you got to bring at least a pair. You have to be prepared. Yeah. But I also need to pack light because I need to bring the podcast gear. You have to check it, don't you? No. You could wrap them in your shorts. You could yep. wrap them in saving your them. shorts. Yep. Yeah. That's space saving. Yeah. It is. Well, and no. your shorts are, are shorter than pants. Yep. That's why they're called shorts. So you, yeah, but I know I'll need shorts. pants. It gets chilly at night. Then, but you're How many be pairs wearing, of pants do you you're need? you wearing some on the plane. Yeah. Right. And then throw one pair in the suitcase. Yeah. And then a pair of shorts. Okay. Maybe, maybe yeah. mm. I'm wearing all my clothes on the plane. Sure, Joey sure Triviani style. <laughs> no bag, <laughs> just hustle. That's what I want to do. Why not? Eh? Hey, listen, they've got all sorts of chips down there that you can't get here. I'll have space in my bag for a special type, a special type of chips that you guys will know about very shortly. Uh, that's because we'll be scientists as well. when We're down there. Probably <laughs> probably true. Um, yeah. Shout out to our friends at AMA Travel for helping us put all this together. If you missed out on the Vegas trip, you don't have to miss out on a nation vacation. We're going to Toronto in March. We'll be staying at the at the Royal Oak Inn downtown. We're going to be watching the game from a suite. Again, our friends at AMA Travel, they put this all together for us. They make it easy. Sweet. <laughs> Sweet. I see, what you did there. <laughs> I see what you did there. Well, might as well pause for an ad. I want to go into last night's win over the New York Islanders, because if you look at the two games set so far in 2023, they were complete opposites. The loss of the crack and the other started off well, they built themselves a two, uh, two goal lead, but then it seemed like once Connor scored that beauty, we hung the mission accomplished banner. And that was kind of where it ended against the Islanders. However, that was not the case. Good. Yeah. Good. Indeed. So mm-hmm. that's both what, four, four good periods out of six. It's uh, a good ratio, right? Yeah. I'll take it. 
<laughs> yeah. Like, like even when the points. Islanders scored last night, it didn't seem like the others were ever out of control. No. And listen, I'll, I, I was very happy with the way they played last night, but I'm not going to get overly confident until we see what happens tomorrow and we see what happens on Monday. Maybe we have a player only meeting every day. <laughs> Buddy, I still think, and I put this on your on your on your tweet there last night. I'm fairly certain the boys it was just they sat around, they had a little TV out there, and on that TV was a split view of a Zoom call. One side was Duncan Keith, the other side was Mike Smith. <laughs> They're just yelling at him. Yeah, well, yeah. Mike Smith was anyway. Yeah. Tell them what they what they got to do. Can we just get Schmitty stand out? Like, can you just be a goalie coach or something? <laughs> you know, he just stands there, yells at everybody. Just give him the just give him Joey seat. Just give him you must stall. Let him sit <laughs> right in the, the room. <laughs> Why not? Right? Yeah, you're on the payroll. Why not? You what walk else is past he doing? Mike if you want to come out to the ice or if you want to leave the ice. If you have a bad start, you gotta walk right past him and tell him why. <laughs> I like this. See, we got plans going. I'm on. really hoping that that players only meeting in a win. Like I also think a Saturday nighter against the Avs. If you show up for that, that could be a real catalyst 100%. for a winning and streak. Right? Two in a row, and then all of a sudden you're feeling really good after two big wins against two really good teams. Now you're going up against a team that you should beat, that you need to beat just for the yep, standings. Chasing. Yep. And let's go. Let's go. Let's go attack those guys out in the West. Then for yep. me, I'm hoping that the others like kind of have a kind of go into tomorrow's game with a chip on their shoulder. Like that's the team that swept them out of the playoffs in and your this, own barn. This team for the record is not in the playoffs or they might be in by just the hair, but Colorado's not doing all, all hot this year either. They, just, they do have a lot of injuries, but we need to take advantage of that right now. You have to. Colorado is teams do. three points back of the Oilers, but they do have three games in hand. Yeah. So let's chip away at one of those games in hand. Well, I guess you can't when they're playing together, but you know, chip away at it. Get a little, yeah. It's a four pointer. Get a four pointer in there. It's yeah. big. The only thing we really don't want is I, or at least I don't, is I don't want Colorado to be a wild card team. I really want them to catch one of those teams in their division. So if the Oilers go on a run again, they don't have to deal with Colorado potentially in round two. That would not, yeah, that be, would fun. not be fun. You know what? To be the best. You have to beat the best. Sure. Yeah. I'm getting way ahead of myself by even saying that. So that's a good point. That's right. That's right. What are you expecting for the game against tomorrow, Colorado? High flying offense. Who's in that? Good Skinner. question. I go back to Skinner as well. I think I go to Stu. So do I. Damn. But I play Campbell game one of the road trip. I'm so guessing they would. LA, yeah. They'll probably go to Stu on Saturday. Then- but I like Tyler. What Tyler said, like, play Stu tomorrow at home against Colorado. Right back to Campbell on Monday. Against, but yeah. So like Campbell teams. gets rewarded by the fact that okay, now we're getting back into an actual rotation again. Yeah, that's his reward. 100%. Yeah. Because that's also going to be better for Stu as well. You, oh, can't, yeah. you can't tire him out like a la Miko Koskinen. I know different players don't, t- don't at me, but the principle is the same. Yeah. I think you're right with that. You're going to honestly, this is actually something that's true though. You're going to have to try and like save some uh, energy for him because he's about to have a baby. Oh my God. Yeah. And we've seen this more than once Mm -hmm. dude has a baby and you know, obviously there's a lot more, uh, every player in the league. Who's a dad sucks. (laughs) No, no. But like initially you run into some, it's your first child, you know, you run into like the Talbots. He went on a big playoff run when they made the twins. Right. I hated that so much. I don't know. I don't like that narrative. It but then, listen, we're human beings. Those things affect us. Hey, so, remember when Fred Van Vliet had a baby during the Raptors playoff run and played like the eight best games of his life after? Hey, maybe Ooh. we should start a GoFundMe for Stu. Just a little hotel room. He's got like JW. nine siblings. You got lots of help around. Nah, you don't want to sure. hang out around them. You want to sit in your hotel room, maybe order some, maybe some room service, mm. put a movie on, Fair. relax, get in the tub. We get Netflix just, password? just gets an oh, email yeah. from us oh, like, hey, here's the money for your hotel room to stay. He's, like, oh, no. He's like, oh, no, I'm actually really excited to be a dad. I'm not going to leave my wife. I was like, oh, oh, I didn't oh. see that coming at all. <laughs> <laughs> this is awkward. <laughs> well, we're coming up with solutions here. I also want to hear from you again. Owen Radio Podcast on Twitter and Instagram. What's your split look like? We've got a big week of games coming up here. We've got a California road trip that culminates with a Vegas game on Saturday. We will be there. So LA Monday, <laughs> Wednesday, you got Anaheim, Friday, you got San Jose. To me, those are three games, six points. Have to have it. Again, I'm looking past Colorado. And then we are in Vegas next Saturday. So score prediction tomorrow, Colorado. 5 2 Oilers. 4 2 Oilers. By the way, they won 4 2 last night, and there's nothing that makes me happier at this stage because I've been doing this bit for so long that when they win 4 2, I'm just like, see, told you. But it's funny. So we played, was we played last week, right? And I think on this show last week, on last Friday, we did a score prediction, and Liam dropped the old 5 2 Oilers. 
with an empty netter. Yeah. And I made the joke. I was like, oh yeah, the old four, two, pull your goalie. Right. Mm -hmm. We played Seattle. We were down four, two. We pulled our goalie. And then last night we're up four, two and they pulled their goalie. I'm like, what was the deal with, uh, Yambo and Dry Saddle both had clean looks at that <laughs> last night. Dry just like, caught the, the the heel of whatever defenseman that was. He took him from the one side, brought him back to the middle, tried to open something up there, and then yeah, I mean, he just had the he got beat well by a short reach. I actually wondered if they were going to give him the thing because he was he was barreling in down center ice last night to yeah, get that loose puck. I thought it would have been. I thought either, it should have been. Yeah, you know what I mean. Where that's like either goal or penalty shot. Because yeah, he would have got it. Yeah, the penalty shot. I mean, no, that's an automatic goal. I should have. I think they should make you take it. <laughs> penalty shot with the goalie out. How funny would that be? Man. You just gotta, but then Dude, Patrick, set. <laughs> Patrick Stefan would like, he'd be Crying. digging a hole in the ground to go live. <laughs> but then you got to make him shoot from before somewhere. I got a fun fact. Hit it me. involves the Oilers. Go for it. <laughs> Carter Savoy's first junior hockey goal was he was tripped on a clear breakaway on an empty net and the puck missed the net and he went in the net. And it counted as a goal. Yeah. Now it's his first junior hockey goal. <laughs> That's a fun fact. This that is, is why you fact. keep the heads go to the shirt Park Crusaders yeah, around, no folks. Kidding, right? Yep. Why I'm here. Mm-hmm. Uh, was that a fun fact or fun. a memory? Fun. It's got a memory? I, have a, I, I, I find memory. it fun. Okay. I don't know what one he thinks the, of it, but it's fun to us. Okay. One of the greatest scorers in AJHL history. His first goal never went in the net. He did. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Carter Savoy, so far, 22 games played with the Condors, four goals, three assists for seven points. How many did he get in that first year with the crew? 38? Uh, first year with the crew, 31 in his first year. 53 and 54 games the second year. Just a heater in year yeah. two. 15-50. Good That's kid. wild. Big day for the former Crusaders. Yep. Dylan Big day. Gunther and now Carter Savoy. <laughs> Gets a mention on ONR. Nice, nice work, Liam. Yeah. Dug that one up. Are they both Edmonton products? Uh, Gunther's from Edmonton. Like KC. He's a KC kid. And then KC Savoy twin. Oh, played a lot of hockey out there. St. Albert. Yeah, close enough. Yeah. A lot of actually Edmonton area people on that World Juniors team yesterday. Zellweger and Doc are both from Fort Saskatchewan. Uh, Schaefer's from Stony Plain. And then it was one other one too. How did our boy oh, finish? Gunther, obviously. Gunther. How did our boy finish the tournament? Just the one assist? He played a little bit in the final. Yeah. You did miss, so stop Chuck though. Oh, yeah. Right. He's, uh, I think he's an Edmonton kid too. Edmonton, yeah. yeah. He's St. Albert boy. Yeah, Just I thought he was. Yeah, internet said was. Edmonton. I know he has family yeah. in Spruce Grove, but. Yeah, I don't know. Just real quick on the World Juniors, because obviously Canada picked up the gold medal last Woo-hoo. night. We were mentioning this on the Oilers Nation every day that OT started basically at the same time as the Oilers game. So I was flipping back and forth. But when I flipped back to the Canada game and saw that OT was three on three, I'm like, what kind of fucking madness do they have going on here? You almost feel bad for those kids. Like, like there was a point where Chechia kept dropping the puck back like three times. And I was like, Oh yeah, these guys do not want to be the one to make a mistake. And a Canada player kept swooping in. So they get spooked and they drop it back again. It was, it's, I mean, I love it because you're never going to go 20 minutes and it's going to force some players to play three on three that have never probably done it. At Your options level. as a coach, do you keep going to yeah. X superstar, even though, you know, he probably only has 70% left in the tank yeah. or do you, I like that. Yeah. Or do you yeah. go to your third liner? That's yeah. the exact yeah, reason but, I've said to get rid of the shootout in the NHL. Yeah. Okay. But hold on these teams, your third liner is a superstar too. Anyways, yes. at least in his own league. Yeah, I know, but like the gap between Connor Bedard and well, yeah. that third liner. Is yeah. Like, but the gap between Connor Bedard and literally everyone else. Do you see, the, you see the point totals for all the like draft eligible players? This yeah. Year? <laughs> but Dard's at like 22, 23. And the next guy's at six. Well, yeah. So like Fantilli <laughs> had five or six points. And is he not top five or like, dude, he's probably going to go two. second. <laughs> <laughs> and like, yeah. that's the gap this year. If you start to see in February teams trading off every veteran they have, that is because the gap is Bedard to Fantilli. Fantilli's probably going to be fine. I liked him in this tournament. Any other year I'd be like, wow, that was wildly impressive from a draft eligible guy. But Connor Bedard just shit on everyone consistently. <laughs> so what do you do? That was wild. Good on him for his clinic. interviews last night too, because yep. everybody kept like, yeah. "So how was your?" Game? I don't want to talk about myself here. Blah 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 blah. I like that. Well done. He seems so fired up too. He's like, "I, I don't want to talk about myself." But when, when you put him next to the rest of, the, I mean, they are, they're all kids. Yeah. But course. when you put him next to the rest of the players, he looked like a double kid. Like it was pretty funny. Uh, I imagine there's a lot of people on the East Coast taking a day off today. Probably, buddy. I saw a photo there. Uh, Pine Halifax was going off. Yep. Yeah. Oh yeah. HFX oh, yeah. Sports Bar too. 
Because <laughs> I was just like, I was looking and I was, was the at the crowd. Yeah. yeah. At the crowd after the game uh, wrapped or the OT goal went in, I'm like, oh boy, there's got a lot of headaches tomorrow morning because <laughs> they were partying. Also, I, Liam and I were joking about this on Owen every day, but if you've watched a Dylan Gunther play before or like talked to him <laughs> at all in the past, him, his celebration is like the most Dylan Gunther celebration ever. He like, said he almost forgot that like, he's like, I yeah. scored, I turned around and Wad like shut his mitts. He's like, I almost forgot like it, what, what kind of game it was. <laughs> and he's like, I took my stuff off. Then. That's what makes him a special player. The moment is never too big for Dylan Gunther. That is Edmonton though. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He's uh, like, hey, we just won the Stanley Cup. That was, you know, everyone's dad is like, that was cool. Has a sip of his rum and Coke and like turns the channel in 60 minutes or something like that. <laughs> uh, changing gears a little bit. The Edmonton Oilers have signed forward Justin Bailey to a one year, two way contract today. So Zach Lang was writing it for OilersNation.com. Asked our boy Bruce Kerlock for some thoughts on Bailey. And this is what he said. Justin Bailey is an absolute terror of a right shot power forward. Like to hear that. He's a big, big man who skates incredibly well for his size. He's also got very soft hands. Despite all of these traits, he has not scored as much as most would have projected. Some of this is injury related as Bailey has suffered a myriad of injuries in his career, including off season surgery, surgery, uh, phew, surgery, off season shoulder surgery. Oof. Once an oiler, he fits in. He, he fits, fits in. in. The, the prerequisite. Other part relates to his inability to use his teammates better when he has the puck in his last five games have been much better this way. And it shows in his point production of five assists in five games. This is a player that could absolutely help a bottom six forward group with his size and speed. There you go. Little contract to talk today for the Edmonton Rose, Justin Bailey, again, one year, two way contract with the boys. Liam, are you excited about that? I know you are. I'm pumped. I can finally wear my Justin Bailey Jersey. I was waiting for you to pull that out. Mm. Can he up. be the long-term answer on the left wing of Connor McDavid? Absolutely. The right-handed right shot? <laughs> or the right-handed. <laughs> yep. Off wing. Blast them in. No problem. Yeah, I dig it, man. Eric Cole. It was interesting just talking about Connor McDavid because um, Tyler filled me in where I miss anything here is we, Vander Kane probably spent a couple of minutes yesterday. If you haven't heard that interview, by the way, Real Life Podcast, go download that from yesterday. Vander yep. Kane was in studio. 30 minutes with him in studio. He was in talking about how fans don't recognize how hard it is to play with Connor McDavid. They're like, you think because he's the, and I'm paraphrasing here, you think because he's the best player on earth, that it would be easier when in fact it's much harder. Cause no, you he have doesn't to try dumb it down to anybody. No, He's running these, these crazy uh, equations in his head and everyone else is trying to keep up. And they're like, what? wait, what? In a way, as he was saying, telling that story, it kind of reminded me of when Wayne Gretzky was the coach of the Arizona coyotes <laughs> and he would just, he would have a hard time. This was probably like a Paul Bissonnette story or whatever, but he would just have a hard time figuring out why players could not score or figure out the concepts shoot where the goalie's not well they, wow. uh, yeah they literally said that about Gretzky like he knew where players were going to be before they were there so translate that to a young man now yeah teach us uh, yeah. well, how, did, how did how did you know <laughs> sir what do you mean how did I know I just knew yeah there, I was there there's an old uh, like, baseball you know story about I think it was low tide tells it really well but like it was like Ted Williams was a hitting coach for the Red Sox one year and there's one guy or a couple guys that like, couldn't hit a curveball couldn't hit a curveball couldn't recognize it and Ted Williams was like what do you mean you can't recognize it? Just watch the seam spin as the ball comes in. And they were like, we can't, we cannot do that. It's, it's hilarious when you got somebody like that, where you're trying to explain it to somebody who yeah. is not that, you know, I think on the other side of it too, like it takes a special player to be able to play with those big players as well. Yes. Like, I know, like, I guess to bring it like to a scouting thing, like a lot of guys like ride off the guys who like the, th the third player on the line who puts up all the points. Oh, you mean so, oh all he does is, is benefit okay, from everyone else. It's like, yeah, but he's also getting guy, those guys the guy. puck and putting the oh, puck right. in the net. Rousseau. So what's the difference? Like, yeah. it's the same thing. He's just as important to the team as whoever the guy is scoring all the points. And the other thing too, like, especially playing with McDavid and dry I feel like there's been some times where you give these guys their chance up there and they're like, Pooley Arvey at first, when he first started playing up there, he is guilty, but sometimes still like, just grabs it. And where are they? Where are they? I need yep, to get it yeah. to them. Right. And sometimes you need to have the confidence playing out with McDavid and Drysdale to be like, I'm not actually going to pass it to you right now. I'm going to make the move and you might be more open after I make the right. Like you need to be able to have the self-confidence almost to play with these guys. 100%. Yeah, that belief in yourself. See, Pooley Harvey's yeah. been able to do like the board work with, with Connor really well. Mm -hmm. Um, it just hasn't translated, you know, towards it's especially on the rush. I noticed it a little bit. Yeah. But yeah. like down low, like you said, on the boards, Dude, he, he comes one way. Yes, I gets it. Fires it back. No one else is around Connor. Connor gets that puck first. It's quite impressive. They, they kind of 
think on the same level. So unfortunately, he hasn't been able to put the puck in the net. We'll see. We'll see. Still goes. time. There's plenty of time left. That brings us to Ask the Idiots. We've got a handful of questions here for our friends at Tourism Jasper. If you go to jasper.travel, you can see everything that's going on right now with the Marmot Escape card. Half price lift tickets. That's what you get. The best deal in the Canadian Rockies is back for 2022-23. Save 50% off a regular price adult, senior, student, and youth lift tickets every day, all season. No blackout dates. Up to 50% off lift tickets at partner ski areas and 30% off accommodations in Jasper. Also, they've got the Jasper Pond Hockey Tournament coming up for the last weekend of January. We're going to be out there as we were last year. It's a great time. There's a crew from Flames Nation coming. I was talking to Princey this morning. He's excited. I said, we're not friends when we're there, Princey. I'm, my elbows are up. Oh, are we going to? I hope they let us play them. Yeah, my elbows are up. Did you guys put them in a different hotel? Yeah. They don't get to stay at the JPL. They're, they're at the Athe so They're staying in Banff. No, they're at the Athe B. Oh, bring, yeah. them, bring them a couple of tents. <laughs> yeah. What is going on over here? I can't. I'll tell you after the show. Ooh. No, no. I want to know now. No, you can't. I can. Maybe we can cut it out if I No, that. I'm not doing that fucking editing. <laughs> <sighs> I texted yeah. it to the group. Okay. I, under- <laughs> I understand the wavelength that Liam is on. And so we can't talk about it on the show, but anyways. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Ask the idiots for our friends. At- <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Listeners. I'm sorry. <laughs> You're being a little rascals here. Airplane. Yeah, this is airplane talk. Yeah. Being little uh, rascals. Uh, Ask the idiots. Liam, you are to my right. You are first up on the list. This one comes in from Scott. What is the best flavor of chicken wing? Oh, salt and pepper. And then, yeah. Salt and pepper. For you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the best flavor for me is the Montreal steak spice. I like a nice dry rub Montreal steak spice. Tyler? Go ahead, Tyler. Yeah, I guess. It's a tie between Thai chili and honey garlic. Thai chili just being like sweet chili, same thing. Yeah, sweet chili. Yeah, yeah. honey garlic. Okay, Rick, cool. you probably had the most rings of any of us. I'm coming to you. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, it depends. Like, so just your standard hot is really nice. Oh, that's my that's my pick. Standard hot. If you want to get outside of it, try and get a little fancy. Like the honey sriracha is really good. Delicious. You can get a, you can get like a spicy version of your honey garlic. That's really nice as well. Um, lemon. Oh, so you take your Montreal steak spice and hot sauce together. Ooh, That'd be nice. Wow. Yeah, I, is, uh, I don't mind dipping. When I was in sauce. Buffalo this year, I went to the home of the original chicken wing and the original. Okay, so Buffalo and hot sauce. Buffalo sauce is hot sauce with butter. So I don't like that butter flavor. Too. Ooh, see, and I liked it. That's fair. So, so, so the OG chicken was delicious. Oh, it was great. Yeah. So good. Point of the story. Big fans of chicken wings around here. Yeah. Chicken. You know? is it, do you guys remember that episode of Family Feud? What? <laughs> Did I ever? Yes. Do you guys yep. remember the time when Family Feud? Steve remember that Jeopardy? Jeopardy? That episode of Jeopardy? <laughs> oh, yeah. this is Steve Harvey one. All right. Steve Harvey was like the question was like name Popeye's favorite food. Oh, I've and seen the reel like, on chicken. Instagram. Every time I think of chicken, that's all I think of, and that's every time my dad. I gotta see this. Did you see the actual so episode, or did you see the reel on Instagram? I've seen like the extended clip of it or whatever. I've not seen the full episode. Oh, okay. I thought for sure you like remember the episode. Oh, no. It was like that weird Thursday in November <laughs> back in 2017. It was Life hilarious. Uh, real quick. Best family feud host, Liam. <laughs> Richard Cron. Uh, the, the guy that used to kiss the people as he would introduce them. <laughs> that was my favorite. 70s and 80s were a different time. Yeah. He just made everybody give him a kiss. <laughs> it, was, it was weird. All right, Tyler, next up, ask the idiots for our friends at Tourism Jasper. Yay or nay? Well, we've got the Heritage Classic coming up, so we were talking about jersey ideas. Yay or nay to the Oilers doing a white jersey with copper and dark blue piping with, like, the rig stick guy as the logo? Ah, no. Come on. I like our logo the way it is. Leave it. No, like, nay. Rick? Nay. Dan? I wouldn't do that for the Heritage Classic, but I've, I've liked that idea for a while. He's a shoulder man. Yeah, that's fair. Keep him on the shoulder. Wouldn't mind it for like I a think you could, thing. I think you could integrate uh, you're, you're it. Into all, you're going into Captain Highliner and the uh, Walt uh, and the Johnny Long Canuck? Driver's Waltz out, out in Vancouver. Johnny Canuck? But I like no. the Captain Highliner. Log one. Driver Waltz. I don't call him that. Oh. <laughs> He's like, no, Log Driver Waltz. <laughs> Liam? Uh, no, I'm good. <laughs> so no love for you, Blake. Sorry. Chris doesn't want to answer the question. <laughs> no love for you. Like I said, I don't mind it. I don't mind it as a, as another logo if they tried to integrate it into something, but 
not for the Heritage Classic. Okay. Rick, you're first. Yep. This is for the B-Man. If you had to swap a forward and a defenseman to play each other's positions in a pinch, who are you taking in this crossover? Okay, I'm putting Darnell as my winger. I think he can, Big man with some wheels. Get the puck in there, go to the net, and then do whatever he's got to do. And uh, who am I putting at defense? Da, 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 da. You know, I'm going to use... Oh, man, he's got to use his stick a little bit better. I'm going to put Pooley Arby down there. I just think uh, clearing out the front of the net would be pretty easy for him. And yeah. I like the way his stick is out there breaking up passes. I think Marcus Niemelainen would be a great fourth line player for us. Um, so I'd put him up there. And then if I had to slide somebody down from the top, oof, um, I would probably go like a, a Devon score mm. kind of move onto the defense. Liam likes that. Liam, nice. just like, yeah, an just, absolute just punt a nice, play. Like, mm. <laughs> <laughs> Liam, who you got? Who's doing a swap for you? Um, I like the nurse shout. I'll just go different. No one. I'll say Tyson Barry. I was I think. thinking about that. Yeah. And then but where are you going to play Barry? Play him on the wing. Which wing? Whose wing is he on? He's a right winger. Yeah. He's a right winger. So he Probably, just wing? No, or he's a top he? six forward. Okay. For sure. He's playing on a power play. No yep. penalty kill. Um, <laughs> the defenseman. Derek though. Broussard style. Interesting. Um, I will go as a defenseman with. Warren Fogle. Tyler. Big Do a little swap. Mm. Dry sidle back on D. I think, you know, he moves pretty well. And also the ability to pass really good with your back end and forehand would make him breaking the puck out of the zone. Unreal. Be better than Kale McCarr. Yeah. Um, and then I would be moving Evan Bouchard up front. He always looks good on two on ones. He's got a hammer of a shot. He's got really good mitts as well. I'd move Bush up. Big body. Imagine dry sidle as a defenseman. Okay. <laughs> Did I ever talk was, about that? Was like, that was an exercise for everybody, by the way. Yeah. Was we need to clip Tyler's face as he was imagining that just now. There's Waz. He's, he's giving that thumbs up. He's ready. Uh, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna move Connor back. Alla, Sergey Fedorov. Could you? Well, I just think like, could you imagine if Connor was circling back and he got a whole lot of runway to fly up forward. I just think it'd be a lot of fun to watch Yeah, if he was an offensive defenseman and then moving forward. Oh my God. I really liked Evan Bouchard. That would have been my pick, but I'm going to do something different here. Mm. You're running out of players, pal. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. Robert Kulak, CC, Chris Russell. If you're Michael Kessel ring, nasty. I guess I'll go just to be different. Um, I'll go Philip Broberg. I think that he's tall. He's lanky. He's rangy. He could be on like a shutdown third line, you know? Yeah, why not? I don't know how much offense is there. We'll see. There you go. Ask the ideas for our friends at Tourism Jasper. Go sign up for the Jasper Pond Hockey Tournament. And you too can throw elbows at Princey's face. Yeah. Wow. Pow. Exactly. <laughs> elbows up. Sticks high. That's the way I'm playing when I'm down there. Safety first. Mm-hmm. No, I'm not fucking around. I actually need to buy a new, uh, new visor. I hate those. Last year, I wore this hilarious one that I have that I just has just a joke. It's a big windshield one. PK Subban style, yeah. Yeah. I was going to say Danny Heatley. It was. It's a Danny Heatley. Yeah. And, but now it's so scratched up and dinged up, I can barely see out of it. So the joke isn't even funny to me because half I can't cage. see out of it. Yeah, half cage. Or should I go the bubble? Connor Bedard. Yeah, I'm just in honor of Connor Bedard, I'll wear the full bubble at the Jasper Pond Hockey Tournament. Does anybody wear the, the shield with the cage on the bottom and the cage on top? Like... I did. I had one of those. You had, in yeah, you had back in the nineties. Yeah, I had yeah. one of those in the nineties. Yeah, like oh, was so like a visor, visor, a visor, and then, and then instead of, of yeah, that goes down into to the uh, into the cage. It was the theory was at the time because I went through One's a bunch of visors up. was there was no fog. Oh, uh, I still dislike wearing those. Visor my favorite. No. Like when you play men's league, you go just no visor at all. Just no, you face? can't. But I'd rather. Oh, you'd rather not. Yeah, yeah. makes yeah. sense. You wear visor. Just to, oh, do you have to wear a cage? Man? I'm full cage and you don't have to, but if I, I was in mentally, I'd probably wear full cage. Cause I just don't want to fuck around with. Yeah. Them. I always have to wear a visor usually. So I'll wear one, but if there was an option, I'd go without no helmet. Yeah. Mac T stuff. Why not? Yeah. I like it. Um, lastly, I just want to touch on for our friends at Betway. Um, I didn't have, I have uh, betting on the Oilers right now when they're inconsistent. It's Ooh. hard. Ooh. It hurts. I didn't have a good night last night and 
while I appreciate that the Oilers won, I would have very much appreciated another power play goal for no specific reason. I would have appreciated a goal from Connor McDavid for no specific reason. <laughs> Sometimes my love of the game. It's more powerful than anything. <laughs> <laughs> now imagine if they got an empty net goal too. Oh, oh boy. Goodness. Oh boy. What did you bet on last night? Ah, empty net goal. Empty net. <laughs> Tyler, how'd you do last night? I had a couple on. I did good. Days. I went heavy puck line, but then I missed. I did uh Connor to score with the Oilers to win. So I missed on that. Yeah. And then I nailed the Hyman chopper up though. I was heavy on that too. Missed on a Klim costing goal. Wah, how did wah. the uh, World Juniors bets finish for you? A daughter, obviously. Yeah. So yeah, before the world juniors, what was that line set at again? Cause it was hilarious. Now 11 and a half for the whole tournament. <laughs> By the way, you got seven points against Germany. Yeah. So, there you go. Um, and Dylan Gunther crushed his, it was set at seven and a half. Shane Wright missed, but then I nailed uh, Connor Bedard. I got him at plus 200 to lead the tournament in scoring. Outrageous. Outrageous. Tyler. Go shout out uh, to our friends at Betway. Provided that you are of legal betting age. And to bed responsibly, of course. It's time to wrap up the podcast with hot, cold performers. As we do every week, we start off with our veggies. So, Liam, I'm going to start with you because you were right beside me. Your AMA Travel Cold Performer of the Week. Cold Performer of the Week. I did have one wrapped up, but I forgot what it was now. So, I'll just go with the fact that you only have my- one this week, though. Yeah. I've got usually, several. Usually has a whole pocket full. <laughs> yeah, I've got a pocket full today. I've got. Grudges everywhere. My <laughs> my car broke down recently. Yeah, that sucks. Who are you going to blame it on? Pet him. Who are you going to blame it on? Uh, the weather. All right. And now it's fixed, but it was just the, the check that I had to write was pricey. Yep. I yep. feel you. Yeah, that's it. That's the worst thing about being completely useless as I am. If there's something that goes wrong with my car, not the Alfa Romeo, of course, it's beautiful. It is a finely tuned machine, but my own car, it's like, they just tell me what it is and I just have to go, okay. Yeah. How much? <laughs> yeah. Oakley, How much Oakley? Oakley? Just right. like a crew mobile. <sighs> yeah. <sighs> it's been up and down like a toilet seat, really. Mm. To say the least. <laughs> Tyler, you're up next. Your AMA travel, cold performer of the week. Cold performer of the week. I'm giving it to myself. Why? So today, after doing Oilers Nation every day, I said, guys, I'm going to go on a McDonald's run. I'm going to go pick us up lunch. Mm. And you said, mm. I'll buy. I did. Very polite, because I bought last time. Tossed him the credit card. Tossed, no. Tossed me your credit card. You guys texted me your orders, and away I went. What did we get? Uh, you ordered a quarter with cheese meal, Diet Coke to drink. Yep. And Bag Milk ordered a uh, egg, McMuffin. egg McMuffin and a coffee. I went. One and I, sugar, one cream. Yeah. What'd you I order? went, and I just got nuggets. No drink. <laughs> um, well, it turns out no one got a drink because even though I ordered them, why. even though I paid for them, I drove away before they gave them to me. And I got to the office, I pulled up and I said, boy, how am I going to carry all this in? Oh yeah. I forgot the drinks. <laughs> so I'm the cold performer. Boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. That is exactly what was going on in my head in the moment. <laughs> I'm a little sleepy now. That's a rough go, boy. Uh, I'm sleepy have- too. And I am guilty. So I'm, yeah. Somewhere on a counter, there is a large coffee. <laughs> and yeah, I was talking on the phone as I was finishing going through the drive thru as well. So the lady <laughs> probably was just like, what an idiot. <laughs> my, my favorite is if I'm ever on the phone with Wanye and he's in his car, I guarantee with certainty that he's going to stop at a drive thru somewhere to get a coffee or a wrap or a yeah. sandwich or whatever. And he doesn't tell me what he's doing. So he just starts talking to somebody else and like talking about an order. Then I'm like, are you ordering food? He's like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I figured, uh, do you need something? I'm like, well, where are you? He's like, oh, I'm on the east side. I'm like, well, that's not going to work. <laughs> like, I'm nowhere near you. Anyway, there you go. Tyler, that's thank funny. you for the effort. Um, <laughs> just piss poor play. Parched. Both Liam and I are feeling dehydrated. Uh, Liam had, had to. Though. That was nice. Yeah. Yep. So you could use that. You feel free to use that anywhere else. <laughs> I'll take it home. Yeah. <laughs> Rick, your AMA travel cold performer of the week. Uh, this one has to go to, I mean, everybody is watching football on Monday. They saw what happened on Monday and Monday night. Um, Skip Bayless decided to make a little tweet out there. Um, it was rather heartless at the time. I believe that's obviously a conversation they need to be had, just not at the time, not from his platform. So I'm just going to give it to Skip Bayless and just the absolute lack of heart he had in that situation. Worse. Nation Dan, 
your AMA travel. Cold performer of the week. Shout out to the ESPN guy that wanted the game to start because he had a parlay going on that game. He was kidding. So, well, hey, anyways, um, my cold performer of the week is going to go to those Navy blue jerseys. I thought we were done seeing those. And then they just brought them out for the Kraken game. Are we? Are they, are they not retired or are they no. going to be a jersey that we're going to be seeing more of? They said at the beginning of the year, we're going to keep seeing it. Oh, okay. Yeah, well, this one, this is the one that goes away right away. If it's not yeah, done the, already. The, reverse retro. Thank Replace God. the navy blue jerseys with a reverse retro. No. I'm on set. Here's, I, I have a hard time with those. Because if you were wearing one right now, sitting in front of me, I would really like it. But on TV, they're it's way fair. harder to read. It's fair. Yeah. So I have a hard time with them. Yeah. What are you trying to read? The number stands out pretty well. You don't need to know the name. You know the name. Well, yeah, I know. But like, I like to see. You know? <laughs> I like to see anyone. Could be anyone. Can't be anyone. Could yeah. Be. With both of our reverse retros, I will say that the orange plays a little bit more like red on TV too. Mm. Last but year's reverse retro was infinitely better. Yeah. And we wore it once. Not even close. Yeah. It's upsetting. And you can't get them. You like, you would have to rob someone now to get one, which I might do. Oh, I might I do. Have one. Uh, uh, my AMA travel cold performer of the week. I got to set up the right button for this. All right. On December 15th, Blake Wheeler ruptured a testicle oh. after he was struck by a Josh Morrissey shot. He somehow finished the game. Now, I have no idea what that feels like, nor do I ever want to. But the idea of it made everybody in this room cringe just a little bit. And you know why? You're as cold as ice. Well, I think he was also icing the biscuits after probably as well. Yeah, he probably called Hendrix. <laughs> yeah. yeah that, Maddie. Like that dented can from Matt Hendrix still. Well, here's me. Mike. Yeah, I got a question right now. We didn't show a, f- a, a picture of, of, of the can. Like, was it crap? Uh, or we see one of those players that Gazdick told us about. Ooh. That's what I wondered too. Cause somebody Spicy. in my mentions, I'm going to give them a shout out right now. It's like, I guess we find out, I guess we just found out who on Winnipeg's not wearing a can. Cause I mean, Hendrix, that picture, like every reporter, once they saw it, they're like, yeah, no, we had to post this thing. <laughs> that was my stomach still in circles because of that. Uh, so that was Jesse that says, I guess we know who in the Jets is not wearing a cup. Yeah, that's horrifying. Ab- yeah, I still can't believe that. Unbelievable. Dude's gonna be wearing three from now on. I would just go out in like a Michelin man style outfit with a big surrounding tire. Why not just wear the goalie one? I don't know. I've never skated in one of those. I want to. That's know what I mean, though, right? Like, but the goaltender has apparently has no issues. Like going side to side, maybe like the lateral is fine, but maybe going like north and south is a little bit different. But there's a lot of things that the guys do though in the NHL that I don't really understand. Like, as an example, neck guards. To me, you wear those all the way through junior, but then you get to the pros, and you're like, "Fuck this thing." I don't get that one. I don't. That was visors though, up until 10 yeah, hundred percent until it got like. Isn't Ryan O'Reilly the last guy? That's not yeah. wearing a visor. Cassian. Yeah. There's a few or, guys like the newest. Oh, yeah, oh the, yeah. He's the right before the grandfather. Yeah, yeah. maybe there's like, um, but the Kevlar neck, socks but the, and stuff. I don't understand why guys don't wear those. Yeah. Okay, that stuff. I agree with, but the neck guard is useless. Well, it depends what kind of like, I want to see people guys with the Richard Zednick. They're not the Richard Zednick. Obviously. Thomas Placanich. The, the Thomas Placanich. The, the big, Oh, like, well, I was going to say like turtleneck. the old, the old fashioned ones that we, when we were, when we were kids with like the chest protector part, <laughs> oh, the bib. And then it came. Yeah. The bib was a great one. But I mean, if you watch the world juniors at all, the player, the players on the Czech team, those things were shedded every game. There's three or four of them on the ice. I'm just Richard Zednick's in my head because he's the exact example of who I would think of in this situation. See, and that's funny though, because that one that the junior kids were wearing, the chances that's going to stop it. Oh yeah. Because they fucking, because they wrap it up with tape and tuck it into their jerseys. You can't see it because it doesn't look cool. Oh, well it doesn't like, I mean, it's still only like a fucking headband around your neck. I wore one of those back in the, you had to wear them back in the day. And of course, yeah, skate would have to hit like a two inch area in order to u- to utilize it. I'll take and that two inches of coverage on base. Yeah, but there's space on the upside, uh, top and the bottom there. Okay, let's keep going. We don't need to debate the merits of a neck guard. <laughs> me, and t- me and Rick are having a conversation. I know. These are things that we'll be talking about in our room in Vegas next week. Or the craps table. We're just trying to include you in our conversations. We're having these conversations. Tyler. Just roll a goddamn dice. Yeah. Oh, that's fair. You can't play craps with us if Jay is doing his whatever he needs to do. Oh, he has a system. 
He got stopped though. The lady was not happy with him. And he was not happy because he 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 like threw seven right afterwards. He blamed it on her. He blamed it on her. That was your fault, lady. Uh, <laughs> all right, hot performers of the week. Let's wrap it up. Dan, you're first. You're right in front of me. Your AMA travel hot performer of the week. Uh, my AMA travel hot performer of the week is just gonna go out to the 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 cat that was already out of the bag, thanks to Jason Greger, but it's the announcement of the the Heritage Classic. I'm just really looking forward to that game and I'm hopeful that I'll be able to be there. We the best. And it had to be Calgary. Yeah. Had to be. A great choice. Rick, you're up next. Your image travel hop. Sticking to the same theme here. Sorry, Tyler. Yeah, I'm I'm Uh, hopping in this my same one. Danny Kellington. He was the, uh, so it's honestly to the entire Bills uh, training staff who took care of uh, Mr. Hamlin. But uh, from what, what they say, Mr. Kellington was the one who gave the CPR that Pretty much saved his life, so as shout outs to him. It's getting hot in here. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna piggyback up that. Like while some people wanted to just sit and yell on Twitter at people and at the NFL, um, I think we gotta applaud the fact that a guy's life was like saved on a football field. That's remarkable. And yeah. also everyone who donated to DeMar Hamlin's GoFundMe as well, because like that guy right now? Yeah, it's at like eight million bucks and it was crazy. I remember like first clicking on it that night and was like, Oh my God, it's like half a million dollars. This is crazy. Yeah, he wants to just, get 2,500 and yeah. bang. And uh, yeah, it just blew up like that. So it was crazy to see all that. And the good news for DeMar Hamlin was that he can now talk and he FaceTimed his Bill's teammates today. Well, he got his breathing tube yep. out of his throat. Thankfully. So there you go. That's, uh, that's also my outperformer of the week. Liam. You're up next, Amy. Travel hot performer of the week. My hot performer of the week goes to my dad on Twitter. He's a hot guy. All right. Um, <laughs> oh, I thought that was it. <laughs> so my dad recently got Twitter and he's funny with it. He's big on his Instagram and Facebook, but on he's Twitter, hilarious on Instagram. He, he can't type quick enough before like the moment passes. <laughs> so he, yesterday he told me that he pre writes it when he has a tweet idea. He just writes it and he <laughs> saves it into his drafts. And yesterday he was frustrated because he has one for when the other score shorthanded and he forgot about it. <laughs> so it wasn't until like later on in the game. He's like, ah, forgot my tweet. And he showed me and it was pretty funny. So uh, my papa. It's getting hot in here. So- you got to send out a little message to him every now and then. Hey, send out your tweet. Send <laughs> yeah. Every time something happens in the other game, do you have a tweet for this? Do you have your he's drafts funny. open? Yeah. Do you have your drafts open? He's not an old man. He's only 46 and he just can't figure out how to use the Twitter 10 game. Years from How's now? your father 46? Well, he was born 46 years ago. <laughs> your father is five years older than I am. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's wild. How old are you? I'm 26. He's 20 years older than me. Oh, he's just a young fella. Just a young wow. man. No one you guys Crazy. get along so well. Yeah. This is like a different vibe. Me and my dad have different vibes? Yeah, just because like my sister is older than your dad. Really? Well, I was a mistake. Oh. Which goes, yeah. Tough, tough break. <laughs> hey, we all got here. Yep, we're here. Uh, where was I? Oh, me. My AMA travel hot performer of the week is if you haven't listened to it yes yesterday, we had Evander Kane sitting where Rick was sitting. And it was just a really cool experience. We didn't expect it to happen. We were kind of wondering if he was actually going to be here. And then when he did, he was super personable and it was a fun interview. So I'm going to encourage you to go listen to it. And I'm going to give my hot performer of the week for Evander Kane for being open with us, playing around and he was just kind of chilling, hanging out. This is why I'm hot. I'm hot because I'm flat. You ain't because you're not. I know this won't bother you guys. It doesn't really bother me, but it's something I think will maybe just Dan and I here. We, now we need to get an oiler in here because I feel like that's going to be the most downloaded episode of all podcasts of this company. And uh, I think we need to get to the top here. So we need to figure out how we get somebody else. Yeah, we here. can't. No room on the couch. Oh, I'll make room. We could fit him well, in. Well, we middle. got three on that couch. We could get King. We could get King. <laughs> Imagine right putting an NHLer's ass in between back. you two. Come on back. And he's King. like, like he's a big dude too in terms of like wide shoulders and shit. Yeah. He's not yet. We're not going to third on that couch with Vander Kane. Believe. Sitting here. Well, Nobody f- believes in us. New just skinny. Liam, you, well, you've honey, wanted to come back to this spot ever since. You know you yeah, have. I always think about it. Yes. That's one of my favorite <laughs> photos is of the three of you with Liam smiling politely in yes. the middle. Mm-hmm. There you go. <sighs> For our friends at Tourism Jasper and oh, my sheet moved. Tourism Jasper and AMA Travel and Betway and... All of you. I just want to say thank you for everybody listening and checking out the Friday episode of Boilers Nation Radio. That is going to wrap. Tyler, any final thoughts? Mm -mm. (laughs) Don't let Tyler buy you coffees. That's where we'll end.
Thank I'll you make it up for you with a round in Vegas. I don't round believe you. Coffees with my own credit card. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe it. <laughs> Thank you guys for listening. Have a great weekend, everybody.